Greetings, all of my dear friends. Welcome to yet another Reading Epic Threads live stream. October 14th, 2021, 7.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm your host, Patrick Gunnels, joining you live from Houston, Texas. We may be having internet issues today. It's on my end. I have looked into it. So I apologize for that. I will be looking into upgrading my internet capabilities just as soon as possible. But before we do that, everybody needs to know you got to have collagen in your system, which is why I take collagen elixir from Isagenics every single day, and I take it in a glass of apple juice. Don't forget to do it yourself. Support this channel at ret.isagenics.com. ret.isagenics.com. Got to check that out. Mm. Just for fun. I've turned on the uh, I've turned on YouTube as well, so I'm I'm broadcasting from YouTube. We'll see how that goes, but uh, I got the day off tomorrow, and uh, then this weekend I'm going to be packing for my real really really long uh, road trip. It's going to be fun as hell, guys. I got to tell you something. I'm really liking this guy Don Huffines for governor of Texas, and I'm liking him a lot, a lot. Taking my vitamins, isogenics. I almost dropped one of them. One sec. Gotta take your vitamins, guys. Take them every day, one in the morning, one at night. Isogenesis from isogenics, absolutely worth it. Never felt so good in all my life. So let's say hello to everybody who is good enough to be here, even though I forgot to schedule this particular stream. Joanne Pappas, Liberty Lisa, Beverly Taylor, Bonneville Pontiac, JC Bird is in the house, Marta Beth, Lillian Snyder, Nola Agent, Guy Smith, watching on YouTube, Calibrate 2, also known as Laura, Mermaid Miss K here. Mermaid Miss K is going to be with us in Las Vegas. And Mermaid Miss K, I hope you will help, help me do producer stuff like take pictures and just kind of keep me focused on doing reading epic threads stuff because i have a funny feeling you're going to be pretty good at that epic jill special ops kim tomanon 17 M michelle miller oh darn man from man tammy jubilee tina young dunaha emmy shanks eileen 325 t-rex k9 claude bernardin Bright Tiki Girl, Dberg 64, Richard Rohrer, America First USA, Ancient But Still Here, DW Bearden, Mark Conway 2, Bad Mofo 505. All right, do we have everybody? Maybe we do. Ellie Courageous, Driver 23, Great Laker 1, Lau Log 3. If I missed anybody, I apologize. So how is everybody doing? I hope everybody do everybody's doing well. Uh, we have a pretty kick-ass email from Mark Conway that we're going to be opening up with today. So I'm glad about that. And then I think we're just going to chat. Like one of the other things is I do want to talk about how guys just think about Hamlet for one second. And I know I've been going on and on about this, but we are basically living through in our own way. We are living through the tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, the entire story of the strange war is waiting for justice, waiting for that which is evil to finally be made right again. We have been waiting to be made whole as a people. We as Americans are Hamlet. We have had our country murdered in front of our eyes, and we are watching the husk of a government that remains continue to hum humiliate us to what is it to dishonor us with their constant shameful actions oh yeah we are living through hamlet uh polonius to laertes speech act one scene two i'm not that big of a fan of the polonius to laertes speech you know it's just a bunch of it's just a bunch of platitudes to thy, to thine own self be true, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't even really drive the the plot forward. So I'm a little bit of a different cat when it comes to how I feel about Hamlet. I'm not really particularly interested in the to be or not to be uh, soliloquy. 
You know that the to be or not to be soliloquy is pretty damn prosaic, if you ask me. It says very simply, why don't we kill ourselves? Oh, yeah, because we're afraid of the afterlife. And that's why we put up with this shit life that we have to live. Bam! There's the to be or not to be speech. You could shoehorn it into any scene in the whole play. The play is unaffected if you remove it. However, the first soliloquy, oh, that this too, too sullied flesh would melt. Incredibly important, indispensable to the plot. Then the next one, oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I? Now, I'm leaving out the to be or not to be. And then, of course, finally, how all occasions do inform against me. Those three soliloquies are indispensable to the plot. And they're also incredibly brilliant. So, yeah, the, the Polonius to Laertes speech I can just live without. By the way, fun fact, the very best Polonius was played by Bill Murray. Mm -hmm. All right. Nats World 1776. Yes, we're not just supposed to be waiting. We should be mobilizing en masse, making phone calls, sending emails, going to school board meetings, engaging in civil disobedience, spreading, inf spreading information, etc. Just my two cents. Thanks you very much. I like your two cents, Nats World 1776. All right. What do you say? We got got a nice nice crowd here, but I, I want to keep this real. We're going to keep this stream re reasonably short. I'm going to get to bed really early, but I want everybody to hear what Mark Conway has to say. And here's something weird. Wait, no, cancel, cancel, cancel. Mark Conway, you look safe. I want to make sure this is Mark, are you believe for me just to make absolutely 100% certain? Because I've never seen that email before. It says, look, I, you look safe, whatever. Email from Mark Conway. October 14th, 2021. This date may not live in infamy, but in my mind it will. Today, I am declaring war on doomers. Doomers are people who say they are on our side, but don't do much, except complain about how nothing is happening and how we are all doomed. Wednesday, I reached my breaking point with doomers, but I need to talk about Tuesday before I explain what happened Wednesday. I took Tuesday off to go to the Audit Michigan rally at the Capitol building in Lansing. It was a great rally many times larger than the ones last year after the steal. I was very encouraged to see all the organizing going on. You could sign up for many different opportunities to help save our country. The speakers were great and gave us tons of information about what is happening and who is helping or blocking their efforts. I was as encouraged as I have been since the stolen election. Have no doubt that the battle to take back our country is just beginning. Now, on to Wednesday. I walked back out to the warehouse where I was flagged down by Doomer Mike. As usual, Mike wanted to know the latest about the information war. I started to tell him about the rally and all the speakers and the organizing when he cut me off after about a minute by saying, Nothing is ever going to happen. This really pissed me off. I gave him a piece of my mind about how he has not lifted one finger to help save our country. I told him not to talk to me anymore about politics. Later on that day, when I was out in the warehouse, he tried talking to me again. I went off on him again, telling him, not to speak to me again on this subject, as I consider him and his fellow doomers just as much the enemy as the people we are fighting. They may be more dangerous than the enemy, as they do their work of discouraging us from inside the movement. Today over on Telegram, I encountered several more doomers. It occurred to me they have one thing in common. They all do nothing for our cause while demanding others to hurry up and get this war over. If they were involved, they would see the momentum is on our side. They surely wouldn't think nothing is happening. So let it be known from here on out, I am declaring a war on doomers. 
If you are a doomer, you are my enemy. Just as much as the cabal and their supporters are, when we do win, you will be treated the same way as the rest of the losers. Mark Conway, Doomslayer, October 14th, 2021. So I thought we'd get started with a little Mark Conway action. We are winning. They are panicking, says Liberty Lisa. All very true. And boy, I got to tell you, the whole the whole nothing's ever going to happen bullshit. What the fuck? Isn't it easier just to keep your mouth shut? You could you, you could feel that way. You absolutely can feel that way. Is it is it a desire to be right? Like, I told you nothing would ever happen. <laughs> These people are sick. And Mark, I am 100% in agreement with you. And as Mermaid Miss K would put so pithily, fuck the Doomers. All right, so I'd like to talk to y'all a little bit about a little mistakey poo I made yesterday. Anybody see this coin? I said that there were a few left. Yeah, that was a lie. These sold out a long ass time ago. So if you really, really want one of these, you're just going to have to track one down and negotiate a price for it. So these are gone. Sorry about that. That was my mistake. However, these, this old oldie but a goodie, this has a few left in stock. I'm pretty sure. They might all be gone by now, but just check it out. JamesMG at Verizon.net. JamesM, I'm going I'm to make this freaking focus. JamesMG at Verizon.net. Where we go, where we go one, we go all. Q sent me General Flynn's Digital Soldiers. This is a gorgeous coin, my friends. James MG at Verizon.net. These are $15 now. And then the same with the reading epic threads. Keep charging. Oops, upside down. Keep charging midnight riders, my friends. I mean, this one's fantastic. And it has a sampling of some of our wonderful contributors, contributors on the back. Check it out. James MG at Verizon.net. You've got to get your hands on these little pieces of history. You want to make sure that when they ask you, Grandpa, what did you do during the Great Strange War? Grandma, what did you do during the Great Strange War? You don't have to say, well, I shoveled shit in Louisiana. Hmm. By the way, for those of you who might be new, uh, that gentleman I just read, Mark Conway, also coined the term Strange War. So very big computer. Uh, he needs to make a devolution coin. Ooh, devolution coin. Well, we got to have a reading effort Fred's coin sell out first. But yeah, something like that's got to happen. Absolutely. No bastard ever won a war by dying for his country. All right. There's a, let's see here. What does everybody think about all these, uh, these politicians right now? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm like... I'm figuring that 90% of the politicians are completely crooked and they're going to stay out of any kind of election integrity. But the 10% who remain, I would say two thirds of those are also against us and just acting as controlled opposition. All I'm saying. So here's how I'm going to be approaching this election season. Let's suppose that we can get some semblance of vote fairness where I live. I'm going to show up at the primary and I'm going to vote for all candidates who are not incumbents. So I will be voting to remove every single person in the primaries. Okay. You go to that, you go to that primary, you vote against every single incumbent. You do it even if you kind of like the incumbent. Do it anyway. Treat it like a matter of hygiene. Hygiene, And then two years later, when it's time to do it again, if your guy that you put in there, if he won, vote against him too. Keep churning them out. Make it so they can't stick around for very long. All right. Dwayne did his Thunderdome on Twitch today. I just watched it. Oh, damn. I should have seen, seen it. All right. Mark Conway says Trump will tell us who is MAGA. Maybe so, but Trump endorsed uh, Greg Abbott, and I'm not going to vote for him. I don't. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now, Mark. 
I'm not really all that happy with Trump's endorsements. Trump also endorsed that scumbag out of South Carolina, uh, Drew McKissick. I, I uh, he that guy turned out to be pure evil. So I'll leave Trump to do other things. I'm just going to vote against all incumbents, even when Trump endorses them. So this guy in here in Texas, Don Huffines. Guys, you know about my prejudice against short men. And this guy's like, I swear to God, he's like five foot five. It's weird how short he is. But I just watched him on Texas Scorecard. And my bigotry aside, I want him as my governor. I want him. And, and I, it's like, I'm like Don Huffines or bust after listening to that guy talk for 30 minutes. I, I have genuine affection for the man after hearing him talk he is he's one of us guys or he's full of shit but he he's his ability to pretend to be one of us is amazing now one thing in the texas scorecard interview that i didn't like i didn't hear a single word about election integrity that's a problem but uh, you know we'll see what he has to say about that this is the first time i've seen him and i will already support him i will support him over alan west for sure i will support him over who, who are the other guys uh, freaking Chad Prather is another one. I don't think I'm going to vote for that. He seems like a Michael Berry type radio host. And then who else? Uh, I don't know. But obviously, I'm not going to vote for for Greg Abbott, even though, even though Trump told us to vote for Greg Abbott. I'm I'm not going to do it. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just a. I just don't take orders so good. Kind of be taller than Abbott. <laughs> That's not hard. Oh shit. Chris Rennie didn't count for women. Women can be any height, and I'm not bigoted against you. It's the short men that I tend to stray away from. All right. Anyway, and those of you men who are short, I think you're all wonderful. I'm just saying, generally speaking, and my politicians, I like them to be tall men. All right. Yeah, and this is the part where everybody talks about themselves. Okay, so anyway, Don Huffine's grandfather owned all the Huffine's dealerships in Dallas, Fort Worth. Okay, so his family's rich. Anyway, um, Churchill was quite short. A uh, great leader, though. Yeah, obviously, exceptions to the rule. You know, Churchill was quite short. Churchill was like five foot six. And then during the in the TV series, The Crown, they had freaking John Lithgow play him. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Number one, John Lithgow is like six four. Number two, he's American. You didn't have a single Brit you could cast as Winston Churchill. Anyway. And, the, and by the way, his British accent, eh. Uh, let's see here. Abbott passed past legislation that this state isn't going to follow Biden's jazz jab mandate. I know, Ruby Blue, he's doing all sorts of stuff to pretend to be one of us. He is not. I think Tom Cruise is 5'8", Chris. I'm not sure, though. All right, let's keep on going. We got we got special ops Kim to get to. We got a new post from Brian Case. We got all sorts of good stuff to get to. All right. From Hey Liberty Rising, Robert Malone, MD. All right, so Robert Malone is the guy who kind of invented the mRNA gene therapy technology. And he has also come out as a very vocal anti this vax guy. Don't take it, as he says. Okay. One, morning thought to ponder. We have had large media and tech insert themselves into medicine and medical practice and assert that they are arbiters of truth. In doing so, they have politicized medicine and medical practice on a global scale. Two, then the media and tech have used the well-developed playbook that they employ for politicians and political organizations and have turned that on physicians and medical organizations. What we essentially have is Targeted swift boating of physicians and organizations. Three, akin to what we saw play out with John Kerry. In so doing, they have applied their go-to metaphors for the political spectrum, far left, left, right, far right, to physicians and medical organizations as they debate how to practice medicine during this pandemic. Robert, there's no pandemic. Four, this has resulted in absurd stereotyping by the media and tech, as well as characterization intended as character assassination, which is ridiculous. Such as labeling Pierre Corey, 
myself and many others as far right when, if anything, we have historically been center left. Five. In turn, this has result in, uh, resulted in a form of self-fulfilling prophecy where those so stereotyped find themselves and their organizations pushed into only being allowed to interact with those parts of the political spectrum which are consistent with the promoted script and narrative. Okay, he says seven, but six. And this yields an odd form of confirmation bias in all of this communication, propaganda, and censorship, but it is also driving historic political realignments, such as Black Lives Matter and police finding common cause and democratic based elements aligning with traditional Republicans. Seven, as a consequence of these forces, I predict an otherwise unintended blowback Key elements of the current Democratic coalition are being peeled off. Black suburban women, young adult voters, eight, which, if this trend continues, I suspect will yield major midterm election disruptions in current U.S. government political power and seems reasonably likely to shift con control of both Senate and House of Representatives. Nine, so expect the media propaganda and censorship to become even more rabid and pervasive as they frantically seek to minimize the political damage to the Democratic Party from this amazingly dysfunctional and corrupt response to the spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. There is no SARS-CoV-2 virus, Robert Malone. And you're going to continue to insist that the fucking things exist and continue gaslighting the whole human race. I'm, I'm at the point, guys, where it's just like... Stop it with this. The virus is real, but show me the virus. Show me the virus. Okay, now you've showed me the virus. Show me how you were able to get somebody sick with it. Never happened. Never happened in the history of virology. No virus has ever been purified and then shown to cause disease. It's never happened. It's been a fraud since the early 1950s when they made it up. Made it up to make us scared of each other. Made us made it up so that they could continue perpetrating these frauds against us. Made it up so that they could invent vaccines, which are basically just poisons. They stick into babies so that they can experiment on us and see what happens. If they want to reduce the population by 90%, don't take their fucking injections. Okay, let's go next. Hey guys, you ever heard of this guy named Brian Cates? He's a kind of a big deal. So I sure hope this is a new post. What? Oh, I have to log in, guys. Give me a second. Ah, there we go. Let's, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and show this on the screen. And if, whoa, I'm sure he will. My six foot six son was 18 when he had his real spurt. What? Okay, Wendy has a giant for a son. All right, share screen. You got you, got you a giant. He was six six and then bam, he had his growth spurt. Jesus. <laughs> uh, remind me not to play basketball with your son. Okay, here we go. The inexcusable treatment of January 6th prisoners continues by Brian Cates, D.C. jail warden found in contempt by federal judge. Maybe a little good news here. Thank you, Brian Cates. All right. So yesterday, a federal judge found the director of the Department of Corrections for the District of Columbia, Quincy Booth, and the warden of the D.C. jail, Wanda Patton, in contempt of court for not handing over required documents relating to the medical treatment of a January 6th prisoner with a broken wrist who has cancer. DC, DOS Department of Corrections Director Quincy Booth and DC Jail Warden Wanda Patton. These are their pictures. Who's this? It's Chris Worrell. And this is Federal Judge Royce C. Lamberth. Julie Kelly tweets, Judge Lamberth just found the D.C. jail warden and D.C. DOC director in contempt of court for refusing to turn over requested documents and related to care, related to care for cancer-stricken January 6th detainee. It says civil rights are being violated at the jail. We'll refer to attorney general office. 
will refer to attorney general office. That's hilarious. All right. Hearing for Chris Worrell, arrested in March and detained since for offenses related to January 6th. He's been in the D.C. gulag for months. Worrell has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and has not received proper treatment. Judge Lamberth, who denied bond for Worrell earlier this month, ordered jail officials to provide medical records on Worrell. They did not comply in time. Lamberth hauled them into court this morning to show cause why they shouldn't be held in contempt. Brian continues. Now, that might sound strange to you at first, that the D.C. jail officials blithely ignored a direct court order from a federal judge until you remember these are the exact same jail officials that three months ago refused to let members of Congress into the D.C. jail to see the January 6th defendants. Not only did jail warden Wanda Patton not let Marjorie Taylor Greene Matt Gates, Paul Gosar, or Louis Gohmert see the prisoners after leading the congressional delegation outside under false pretenses once they knew why the elected representatives were there, jail officials locked the doors and then accused these members of Congress of trespassing. So it's not exactly that big of a stretch to learn that these self-same D.C. jail officials decided to ignore a court order from federal district judge Royce C. Lambert until he forced to come to court, until he forced them to come to court on Wednesday and explain why they hadn't complied. Julie Kelly tweeted yesterday, Lamberth starts by blasting the Department of Corrections for limiting virtual hearing rooms cut from four to two. DOC refused to cooperate. Now, talking about incompetence by DC jail on COVID testing. Worrell is not in the courtroom. His lawyer spoke with Worrell early this morning. Officials include DC jail warden Wanda Patton and DC Department of Corrections director Quincy Booth. DOJ attorney defending jail officials claims it's a miscommunication Lambert says he was satisfied in September Worrell was getting cancer treatment, was then dumbfounded that that wasn't the case. Jail officials lied to Judge Lambert in an earlier hearing back in September when they represented to the judge that Worrell was getting the cancer treatment he needed. And now they were caught. Julie Kelly tweets, Worrell's hand was broken in May. Orthopedic surgeon recommended in June that Worrell needed surgery. Lambert says he thought Worrell and others should be moved from D.C. jail for the lack of care. Responsibility of U.S. Marshal, but Marshall said he didn't get notes from j- jail DOJ. Lambert demands to know where notes were. Department of Corrections official says he doesn't know why they weren't turned over as ordered. Some mumbo jumbo. Lambert claims notes only turned over after he set contempt hearing. Department of Corrections attorney says there was ambiguity over whether Worrell needed surgery. Lambert reveals the required notes were only turned over after he had notified Booth and Patton he was calling them in for this contempt hearing. DOC attorney now tries to float the claim that the reason Judge Lambert's court order about Worrell's medical treatment was not complied with is because there was ambiguity over if Worrell needed surgery for his broken hand. Julie Kelly, I don't accept that explanation, Lambert says. Department of Corrections attorney claims they've complied and were not in contempt. They've learned lessons, lol. What happens when surgery recommended in June and never followed up? Does no one care, says Lambert? No. No, they don't care. No one noticed in the jail that he's sitting there in pain all the time? Department of Corrections attorney claims jail guards often ask detainees how they're doing. I'm laughing so hard. Alex Savron, Worrell attorney. Injury occurred May 21st. If it had been attended to, surgery might not have been needed. Department of Corrections lawyer lamely says the guards talk to the patients all the time and floats the excuse that Worrell never complained about being in pain. This is indeed laughable. 
Letters written by January 6th prisoners at the DC jail paint a very different picture from the one the DOC attorney is giving to Judge Lamberth. The Jeff McKellop letter, among others, gives an in-depth look at what conditions inside the DC jail are really like and likely explain why Warden Patton has gone to extraordinary lengths to keep members of Congress or the press from having access to the inside of the jail. Warrell's attorney, the political prisoner, Warrell's attorney, Alex Savron, notes to the judge that the wrist injury happened on May 21st. It was left untreated for more than a month until the orthopedic surgeon examined it in late June and then recommended surgery. Had the injury been treated in a timely manner, no surgery would have been necessary, which directly brings up the fact that the DC jail is not giving its prisoners adequate medical care. And as Judge Lamberth himself had noted back in September, if the jail cannot provide adequate medical treatment for some of the January 6th defendants, then they should be removed from that jail and sent to a correctional facility that does have the ability to treat them. Savron says Worrell recommended for six months chemo and radiation to treat his cancer. Cruel and unusual punishment for my client. DC jail not prepared to handle those treatments, including nausea, pain, etc. Outcome could be grave injury or death. The fact, a prisoner known to have cancer, has been left sitting there for almost a year untreated is a national scandal. Worrell should have been moved to a facility that could treat his cancer long ago. Instead, Quincy Booth and Wanda Patton kept him right where he still is, inside a jail, living in squalid conditions. Line just went dead for a few minutes, reconnected. DOC attorney says Worrell has had biopsies, seen specialists who are on his cancer team. I've heard about his deteriorating condition. Lambert asks for details about Worrell's cancer treatment going forward. Being allowed to see specialists on his cancer team inside the DC jail isn't the same as those specialists giving Worrell the medical treatment he needs. This is another attempted dodge by the DOC attorney, Julie Kelly. Doctor says it will be intense chemotherapy regimen, says he will be in a medical unit after treatments. Keep in mind, this man has not been convicted of any crime. Lambert himself has denied bail awaiting trial. No trial date sent. set. Treatments will be at Howard University. Inexcusable. This man has been held in that jail for most of a year, and he still doesn't even have a trial date set yet. Finally, Lambert has heard enough. Lambert finds D.C. jail warden and D.O.C. director in contempt of court inexcusable. Holy shit, he's berating them. This is awesome. Judge Lamberth is now referring both the D.C. Department of Corrections and the D.C. Jail to the Attorney General for Investigation for Civil Rights Abuses. What a fucking joke, joke Judge Lamberth. Given that the current Attorney General is Merrick Garland, we'll have to see if this goes anywhere. No, we don't. We don't have to see shit. We know it goes nowhere. Public pressure is going to be important, so let's get the word out about this. Send this post to everyone you know. No bail. You think when Hillary Clinton gets arrested for treason, do you think that Hillary Clinton will get, get out on bail? Do, uh, Brian, thank you for writing it. I, whenever I read something that makes me want to set the world on fire with one of Thomas Wichter's World War I flamethrowers, I have to take a step back and say, am I being played here? I don't know what to make of all this. Here's what I do know. This guy, Judge Lambert, decided that a guy who didn't really do anything wrong has to be held indefinitely without bail. So I don't really see how Judge Lamberth isn't part of this crime. They're going to be held accountable. They're going to be held accountable. So I have to believe they would be held accountable. Uh, Hildebeest is still in Belfast. Well, maybe she can uh, get drunk and sing songs about hangings. 
All right, let's let's keep going. Thanks for the thank you for the call, on Brian. It's just it's so freaking demoralizing. So, guys, I just would like to say from the bottom of my heart, those of you who have subscribed on Twitch, you make my life worth living. Let me tell you something else, though. Some of you may not know this. Hang on, I'm gonna pull up a Brian Cates thing real quick. You may not know this. But you can subscribe free using your Amazon Prime account, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. All right, Brian Cates. The charge against Warrell is that he used pepper spray, I believe. There's a picture of him squirting it towards someone off camera. I don't know who. Not sure if Warrell even went into the Capitol building. It's pepper spray. No bail and no trial date and held for almost a year in squalid conditions. It's almost as if we're trying to be goaded into rage. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. Okay. But those of you who do not know how to do it, how to use your Amazon Prime account to subscribe, I'll tell you something, my friends. My baby sister, Rebecca, she tells you how to do every last bit of it. And she made a video and it goes a little something like this. You sign up to Patrick's channel in Twitch with your Prime membership. So you get one free Twitch subscription with Prime. And a lot of us have Prime. Might as well support Pat doing that. So I was a little confused, so I thought maybe others might be confused. So I have this cool technology that can record my screen. Don't look at the stuff I'm shopping for. Okay, so um, just go to your accounts and lists and go, this is an Amazon, and go to your Prime membership. And then you can go to explore my benefits. And I just did a search for Twitch. And then it takes you to Prime Gaming. And then in this area, you can actually connect your uh, your Twitch account and there should be like right in this area there should be like a connect your Twitch account and I did that so that's why it looks like this so then um, I was like clicking around trying to subscribe and I did a search for Patrick and it doesn't come up with anything and so I was confused and I was badgering Patrick and he's like I don't know I just did it and I'm like you're dumb so um, basically we figured out that um, what you do is you go to Twitch so um, I went to Twitch and in here, it doesn't have like subscribe free, which is what Pat was saying it should say. So what you do is you actually click, sub so this is Pat's channel, it's Peak Reynolds. Um, you click subscribe, 20% off, you scroll down and it looks like you have to pay, but actually if you click this little checkbox, you can then subscribe with Prime. And after that, I have no experience, so, um, if you do have experience, if you have to like do it every month or something, I don't know. I imagine not, but just comment in um, the comments after Pat posts this video if you have any more experience beyond that. All right. All right, guys. So now you know. That's right. Those of you who subscribe using your Amazon Prime accounts, you do have to read up every month. So I have to, it basically means I have to pester you every month. I don't mind. That's what I used to do for a living, is just pester people. All right, so I wanna share my Telegram and my General Flynn stuff, if I can find it. General Michael Flynn, where are you at, bruh? Where are you at? Where are you at? I don't know. I might have to stop right now. Oh, there it is, real General Flynn. All right, so the next part, it's TikTok. This was shared by General Flynn, and I'm going to share it with you. So bear with me if I can figure this out. Share screen. Window. Did it. This should work. I think. Let me know if this works, guys. today because I am a healthcare worker. I've been in my profession for almost 20 years. None of you probably know what I do. Uh, I run the heart lung bypass machine open heart surgery. There's two of us in this town. We were both in this room today. 
us and we can't show up for work, the hospital goes on diversion, which means the ER can't take critical patients and the helicopters fly right over us. Neither one of us are getting this vaccine. Neither one of us are willing to take that because we know what's at stake for freedoms past that. But my encouragement is that all of you have the power that I'm talking about to stand up and to be the voice when you think you don't. You're more valuable than you think you are. And the team that I work with at both hospitals in this town feel very strong and very similar. And if this mandate goes through, and these people don't show up for work, then people are going to start dying for other reasons. And it's because there's going to be nobody to take care of. All right. I just wanted to get that out there real quick. General Flynn posted it. Uh, boom. I don't need to share that. Stop sharing. All right. Uh, fun fact, Bitcoin is remaining over 170, uh, uh, over 57K. P. Gunnels read Q drop 2725. It's adorable. You think I can just pull that up that fast? We'll be just, okay, so I got to go to qmap.pub, right? qmap.pub, right? Dot pub, is that what it is? I need to read Q drop. Which one is it again? Fuck. 27 something, 2725. Okay. So we're going to qmap.pub refuse to connect. That must not be it. Uh, I don't know. How about qanon? Q A N O N dot. I just, just type qanon on duckduckgo. Well, how about how? Uh, no, no. I don't know what it is about me that makes you guys think I have competence and skills. Anyway, if anybody wants to email me qdrop2725, I'll read the shit out of it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Ellie Courageous, 2725, February 14th, 2019, 1146 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, blah, blah, blah. Chatter, Bill and, Bill and Hillary's public health will begin to rapidly deteriorate. Q, nice, nice. And Ellie Courageous, may I just say, you're not just courageous. You're, you're Ellie on the spot. That was good. All right. So, hmm. All right, good thread. It has been requested that you read. This is from Madam Pickles. Thanks to Special Ops Kim, as usual. Uh, Madam Pickles is the one who wrote that thread about Biden being caught on a hot mic or on a phone uh, re recorded phone call saying, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to make Trump look like a hero when I'm president in four years or something like that. Very good stuff. So anything from Madam Pickles, I definitely want to look at. All right. Madam Pickles, a thread. I'm more convinced than ever the DNC Democrats won the battle election to lose the war implosion of their party. They are mentally preparing their most ardent supporters for the coming slaughter in 22 and 24. This is not about them turning things around. It's about them getting their base ready for a slaughter. It took an enormous amount of money and fanaticism to steal a presidential election and get the Senate close enough so that it favors the DNC. Keep in mind, they just barely made it, despite throwing literally everything they had and the kitchen sink. Without Trump derangement syndrome moving fanatics, they turn on the DNC. Biden's running off his moderate supporters. Big tech is losing influence, even if they paid hundreds of millions more again. Would it matter if no one listens to them? This is how they lose the war. And then Music and Fiction asks, I agree in part, but I have to wonder. If the mechanisms that got them into power haven't been removed or obliterated, what will stop them from doing it again in 2022? It's not a criticism of the idea, but the old saying, if you don't get the leaven out of the bread, it ain't going to be kosher, sticks in my mind on that. I've never heard that phrase. Any thoughts on that part? Madam Pickles responds. If you, hey guys, if you don't get the leaven out of the bread, it ain't going to be kosher heard me for the first time. Multi-part reply inbound, says Madam Pickles. It really depends on what your goal and expectations are regarding election integrity and repair. If your goal is to purge the corruption within the system, that's not possible. 
like the common cold, corruption will always be there wherever humans are involved. If your expectations are arrests and jailing, that's not likely. Not impossible, just not likely. People who insist on these two things are never going to be happy. Election integrity happens on a local level, period. Even if you have a state legislature that cares enough, if the locals aren't holding feet to the fire or getting personally involved, nothing changes. Local involvement is everything. And that's already happening. Keschel, Seth Keschel, and Pressler, Scott Pressler, are two people empowering locals. They are traveling around the U.S. telling people facts and showing them how to get involved. Bannon is also having a rippling effect. Moms are wrecking it. All these little people who the DNC, GOP, and mainstream media don't care about are creating a national red wave. Not in the future, but right now. You just don't hear about it. Good people are taking over the offices and positions that facilitated the cheating for decades, not just in 2020. The elites don't want you to know. Or their faces are, are far too far up their butts to notice. Take your pick. Either way, it's going to bite them in the rear something fierce come 2022. That's all local, but what about national? The GOP is playing chicken with the DNC in Congress. DNC keeps yielding, and every time they do, they lose more power. This is why Biden and company are resorting to abusing executive power. They've got no real support in Congress. Otherwise, the infrastructure bill would have passed, and we'd have 22 new justices. Trump has turned himself into an influencer. Not the social media woke kind, but the real kind that makes or breaks careers. He holds the GOP money strings, and they know it. Mainstream media uses fear to gain attention. Trump does, too. He's playing both sides with the main goal of tearing apart the reputation of the left. It seems to be working really well. Biden's reputation is tanking hard. He's also doing something else, but I'm not really sure what that else is right now. On the legal side of things, stuff is happening. There's Durham scaring the bejeebs out of people. Brian Cates is your go-to for that, t.me slash draw and strike channel. But there's also a lot of people taking it to the chin that us little people aren't aware of or don't know are important. DFs, DSFs does a good job chronicling that. Dawson S. Field does a good job chronicling that and even has a but nothing's happening tag for that. My personal perspective is there is far more hope going forward than there is despair concerning our elections. Lastly, the swamp has a propaganda arm for a reason. They need public support to keep things going. But the more the swamp clamps down on people, the more they're hated and their propaganda is ignored. It's really bad for them if they lose public support. And they're losing it. As Victor said, be a happy warrior. We're winning. <laughs> Music and fiction says, somebody get this to Patrick Gunnels immediately. Ha ha, yes. Thank you, Madam Pickles. Your, your thread is brilliant. So uh, about, about the Hamlet thing, guys. The reason I'm, I'm so focused on Hamlet right now is because most of the play is spent, I would say half or more of the play is spent with Hamlet agonizing over getting justice, over how utterly wronged he is, how unbelievable it is that it's been allowed to get like this. How did this happen to my kingdom, my beloved Denmark? And back and forth he goes, and he says, but we have to be absolutely sure that he's the one who did it, that he really deserves it. Have I been deceived? Blah, 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 blah. And, and I, I go back to Hamlet, and I watch it, and I just say to myself, my God, we're going through the exact same thing. And so I'm waiting. What we're waiting for 
is that act four, scene four soliloquy, when Hamlet finally says, holy crap, this delicate and tender Prince Fortinbras is willing to bring an army of 20,000 men to take a tiny patch of land in Poland because of a quibble that they had. If he's willing to do that, what the hell am I doing whose father was murdered by his uncle who is now stooping his mom? And there is going to be some point at which the American people say, holy shit, my uncle murdered my father who is now stooping my mother. From this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. And I think that is what Red October is. I think it is that act four, scene four soliloquy when Hamlet reaches his point of no return. And from there, guys, Claudius is truly rightly fucked. So just take heart in that as well. We are approaching that moment. Oh, draw and strike. Dude, the momentary freezing is back. Nothing I can do about it, big dog, but thank you for letting me know. I have decided to take these things with equanimity. Uh, prayers for Bill Clinton that he makes a speedy recovery. Hillary Clinton will need his support for the difficult times again. What are we talking about? Are you breaking news in my chat room? Draw and strike three. Bill's, what the fuck? What's going on, home skillets? All right. Do we have news about sepsis going? Is this why sepsis has been in my chat room? You freaking people breaking news in my chat. All right. Well, I'm going to need some, some info. Maybe somebody's emailed me. Uh, Hamlet goes mad as every clandestine move makes has unintended consequences. Everyone dies except Horatio, who's ordered by Hamlet to live to tell the story for posterity. I don't think Hamlet was ever mad. It was always fake. That's my personal opinion. That's why I sent you the Q drop, P Gunnels. Oh, I, well, Mermaid Miss K, I'm behind the. I'm, all right, dude. Sepsis is sepsis. He's fucking dead. Sorry, Lord. Okay. So, anyway, uh, let's check this out. Q drops, Q alerts.app. All right. Whoa. Bill Clinton hospitalized with sepsis report. Now, this is the kind of thing that I, I go ahead and put on the channel just for all of y'all guys and girls. I should, should say girls. You guys are mostly girls. All right. Bill Clinton hospitalized with sepsis report. Bill Clinton has been hospitalized in Irvine, California with sepsis. CNN reports. Okay. So I could be forgiven for not noticing this because this broke while I was running my mouth. Okay. According to a spokesperson, he was admitted to UC Irvine Hospital's intensive care unit with a non-COVID-19 related infection Tuesday. Guys, I thought it was well known that there are no non-COVID-19 related infections. I'm a real dick, but I don't care about what happens to Bill Clinton. I'm, I'm Hamlet pretended to be crazy. We're going to talk about that in a second. Let's 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 get to this in a second. All right. He reportedly felt ill throughout the day. The spokesperson described the former president as responding well to antibiotics on the mend and in good spirits. All right. Very well, then. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, oh, this is another reason why I want to talk about Hamlet. The entire. So what so what what Hamlet said was he didn't say I was going to pretend to be crazy. He said he was going to have to assume an antic disposition. Guys, who does that remind you of? Trump, at some point when he realized that it was going to take a massive operation to save the United States and the world from this cabal, to break the hold of the cabal on the world, he did assume an antic disposition. He, he created this persona of raving Donald. And, uh, you know, Catherine Austin Fitz says, and, and she's my new, one of my new people. I really adore her. Uh, Catherine Austin Fitz has noticed that the news is lies and the fictions have truth. Um, 
And there is truth in Hamlet going on here in a very matrixy kind of way. And I, I don't have my mind around it completely. I'm working on it. We're going to have a big deep dive on this coming soon. But Donald Trump has assumed a manic disposition. Just to make sure you understand. Hamlet is brought to the place where Marcellus and Bernardo and Horatio all saw the, the fully armored ghost of the dead king. Hamlet's very skeptical, but then he actually sees the dead king who says to Hamlet, Hamlet, your uncle killed me. You're going to have to avenge this most unnatural murder. Do not touch your mother. I, I don't care how you feel about your mom. You're going to leave her alone. Hamlet then comes back to all his guys and he says, listen, guys, this is the worst thing ever. What you have seen, you can't say a word about. And I got to tell you something, in order for me to be able to operate, I'm going to have to act a little freaking batshit so people don't take me seriously. If a glance from you to another of you is going to betray what happens, it's going to cost me everything. So on my sword swear that not a word or a glance or a gesture of this ever gets out in any way, period. Something, Hamlet is about an intelligence operation, guys, in order to, in order to save Denmark from the incredibly corrupt enemy agent who has become king. We're living through it in such a big way. Uh, let's see, dude, but he drank poison. That's not the end we have in store, is it? Uh, Hamlet didn't drink poison. Uh, Hamlet got stabbed by a, a poison blade and Laertes said, I'm so sorry, I freaking stabbed you with a poison blade, you're gonna die soon. And then when he realized he was screwed, he killed Claudius by stabbing him and feeding him the poison. Gertrude is deceived by Claudius. I mean, you assume she was deceived by Claudius and there's no, there's no smoking gun evidence to say she was in on it. But I mean, how is Hamlet supposed to know that? Ooh, okay, hang on. St. Richie, DJT has stated that dominoes falling pre midterms Rhinos have nowhere to run and moderate Dems are considering if becoming more conservative might not be the path. Every politician in America is now waiting to see what 45 will do. He is riding in an armored tank with everything from grenades to missiles at his disposal. Love the metaphor, big dog. Let me ask you. Oh, yeah. Joanne Pappas, Hamlet, meet the Matrix. Something like that's going on here. And I'm, I'm kind of mulling it around in my head. But oh, by the way. Fun fact, and by the way, I, I'm not, all, I'm not, this is not an invitation to disagree with me because what I'm about to state is not disputable. The best acting Hamlet was Mel Gibson. But that wasn't a very good movie. The best acting Ophelia was Julia Stiles in the 2000 version with Ethan Hawke. The best Polonius, Bill Murray the 2000 version with Ethan Hawke. The best Claudius was Derek Jacoby in the Kenneth Branagh version. Um, 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 um. The best grave digger was Billy Crystal in the Kenneth Branagh version. Uh, the, the only one that, that did the entire play was the Kenneth Branagh version. And I will defend this to the death. Kenneth Branagh is by far the worst Hamlet. His performance was fucking terrible. I mean, really bad. I just had to get that off my chest. And this is not an invitation to discussion. I'm just informing you of the facts. St. Richie, what do you think about my, my, so I want to get together with Mike Billund, who's hopefully going to be my next representative in the United States Congress. We need to start a campaign where we say, Claude just said something funny. We need to start a campaign where we say, 
Go to your primaries and vote against all incumbents as a pure matter of hygiene. We got to figure out how to package that up in a nice marketing standpoint. Claude Bernardin says, Patrick, are you sure you're not thinking about the Lion King? That's delightful. Guys, do you know that that uh, Sons of Anarchy is also based on Hamlet? All right. Do do. Here we go. Draw and strike. Trump figured out early in life that if you present an outrageous appearance to an opponent, human nature being what it is, they simply will not take you seriously. Thus, we get the outrageous hair, the orange tan, the blowhard alpha male act. Exactly. And uh, sure has worked. Sure has worked. Here's a place. Ooh, Ellie Courageous. Here's a place to watch them all. HTTPS colon slash slash moviesjoy.to slash search slash Hamlet. Wow. That's awesome. I may check that out. I wish... I wonder if I could put that on a big TV screen as well. I have to figure that out. All right. Voter integrity, voter hygiene. So the way I look at this, uh, Beer Nuts 71, until we start ejecting all of these people in the, the primaries, the general elections don't really matter. Okay, so let's do a special ops, Kim. Oh, you know what? Let's do a quick let's do a quick uh, ad, and then I'll just shoot my mouth off a little bit more about the Hamlet stuff, and then we'll we'll do it. All right. Our ad has begun. So I'm excited about my road trip, guys. Like in a big, big way, because. I get four stops. So my first stop, I'm definitely going to be going to Dallas. So if any of you people uh, who live in the Dallas area have any suggestions for where I should stay, hook me up. I don't I don't want to stay in the city center. I want to stay somewhere outside of town. Uh, but just any suggestions, very much appreciated. Then I'm going to be in Midland. I love, I, I really enjoyed this the short amount of time I spent in Midland. I've never been to Albuquerque, and that's going to be my very next stop. And I'm kind of excited about that because, as we all know, New Mexico is, I mean, it's the land of enchantment. And it really is. It's a gorgeous place. I love it very, very much. Uh, next will be Flagstaff, Arizona, which is at 6,700 feet of elevation. And that's not something I knew. So... I'm pretty stoked about all of that stuff. It's going to be a, it's honestly the, the road trip is the part I'm super excited about. Vegas is cool too. I'm really excited about seeing all of you people as well. Like Mermaid Miss K, St. Richie's going to be there, guys. JB White, AKA the Rattler Gator, is going to be, be there. Matthew Trump is going to be there. It's going to be a fun, fun time. Bad Mofo says, what? What's a shithole? <laughs> Come to Fort Worth, way better than corrupt Dallas. It's, Totally an option. Totally an option. All right. St. Richie says, sounds great, Patrick. The law of averages alone will create a better political landscape because if 75% of incumbents are corrupt, what's to, uh, then what's to lose? Yeah. So the way I would, I would put it is you will be guaranteed to eject some people who don't deserve to be ejected, but that's a small price to pay. Those people will be just fine. They can go find something else to do with their time. So yeah, just vote against all incumbents. All right, what else we got? The Great Purge. Yes. Chris Ranney, throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't know if that's a good selling point. You think that, that could be a slogan, but I don't know. I do not know. All right. All right, are we are we done with the ad, the one minute ad? Okay, we're done with the one minute ad. So we're gonna do one more special ops, Kim, and then the worst casting in any Hamlet ever was Jack Lemon. What you didn't like him playing Marcellus? So I thought he was fine. I thought I honestly I thought that just constant casting of wait did Jack Lemon play Hamlet? Okay, so Jack Lemon played Marcellus a, a small part in the. Kenneth Branagh version, and as Marcellus, he was fine. But in the Kenneth Branagh version, it was very distracting that they kept casting these super A-listers for all of these bit parts. Like, I mean, Billy Crystal as the Grave Digger was fucking perfect. But uh, I mean, like, like Robin Williams as Ostrich—that was weird. There was no good reason for that. 
But anyway, um, yeah, he Marcellus. Okay, so yeah, so Jack Lemon had the bit part of playing Marcellus, and he was the one basically explaining at the very beginning to Bernardo. And so he was with Bernardo standing watch, and Horatio comes to see them, and Marcellus is the one who says, "Look." We think we saw the dead king marching around in full armor here. I thought he was fine. I, I didn't, it didn't bother me that much. Having somebody that famous playing that small of a role was annoying. All right. He had a freaking New York accent. Ah, oh, that didn't bother me that much. There, there's a lot of weird stuff about the Kenneth Branagh version that you just kind of have to power through because it's really the only one that covers the entire script. I mean, they they cover it all the way to the point where Branagh's like doing the whole speak the speech I pray thee. Uh, as I pronounced it to thee, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had his leaf the town crier spake my lines. I mean, every line is in it. Like the freaking player king, played by uh, Charlton Heston, is in it. Uh, it was fine. I, I mean, I'm not gonna. I mean, I, I bitch about so many things. I should go back and look at it. But if 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 he had a New York accent, wait a minute. You mean Billy Crystal had a freaking New York accent, right? That's awesome. If you're talking about Billy Crystal as the gravedigger having a New York accent, I think that's delightful. I think it's lovely that the, the gravedigger could have a New York accent. I, I have a I have a different way of looking at these things too. Ooh, there's a devolution conference coming in Florida. All right. I wonder if I'm the only one. I'd rather watch Hamlet in a theater than in a cinema. You know something, Jerry Coogan? I've never watched Hamlet in a in a theater in my whole life. Never happened. All right. So Kenneth was great with all the what? Kenneth was great with all the EIG. He was great with all the... Uh, I, I got to tell you something. The Kenneth Branagh version was wonderful to me, except for Kenneth Branagh. And I think that Kenneth Branagh couldn't have done it worse if he had been hired to ruin the part. It was so bad. All right. Special Ops Kim. You know you want Special Ops Kim. Seems really good. All right. Let's see what we got here. This is from... All right. So why don't I go ahead and blow this up so everybody can look at it together. I don't know what I'm looking at here. So just bear with me. <laughs> Kenneth was great with all the Shakespeare. He's okay. I, I liked him in... Uh, my, what was it called? I liked him in Much Ado About Nothing. He was fine in Much Ado About Nothing. He sucked as Hamlet. All right, let's see here. Here we go. Richard Harris. Well, ha I mean, okay, St. Richie says, I wish Richard Harris had played Hamlet before his passing, but I mean, maybe King Lear, but, but you got, dude, you got to be, in my opinion, you got to be under 40 to play Hamlet. By the way, you can get this shirt at usadevolution.com, usadevolution.com. Pretty please, sugar on top, use promo code Shapiro. Very important. All right, let's go and bam. All right, so everybody check this out. It comes from Special Ops Kim. Allied Federation, Unified System Division, Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division, International Brotherhood of Teamsters. So... That's the Jimmy Hoffa people, right? Okay, so October 14th, 2021. All BMWED, Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division, they left out an E in employees. Is there anything significant about that? Whatever. All right, here we go. So this is the Teamsters Union. Dear brothers and sisters, we send this communication concerning UPRR's unprecedented action of COVID-19 mandates against its employees, many of whom are BMWED members. We have listened to the thousands of voices that have spoken in opposition to the mandates. Our union officers have received more calls and concerns on this issue than any issue in our tenures. We are preparing for all necessary action that can be legally taken to stop the unprecedented mandates. We will continue to keep you informed. We also understand the urgency of this issue as many of you will need to begin vaccinations soon if you choose to do so pursuant to the mandate. We ask that you continue to watch for updates and blasts. 
to the membership via email or text message. We understand the undue stress and anxiety that has been inflicted upon you. Many of our members have committed much of their lives to their railroad careers, and those careers are being threatened. All members have diligently worked through the pandemic, keeping the train on the tracks, which was a crucial part of our country's survival. Now many of the non-essential personnel that hid away in their home offices and contributed very little to these companies' survival during the pandemic are now threatening your careers. Finally, I will remind you that our strength is within our solidarity and all actions taken will require us to stand together. We ask that all management that stands against these mandates can communicate with us and you will remain anonymous. Tony Cardwell, USD General Chairman. Dennis Albers, Allied Fed General Chairman. CCP, I mean, CC Carbon Copied, Executive Vice President and Chief Officer Elizabeth Whitehead, General President BMWED Freddie Simpson, BMWED Vice Chairman. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Thing about this is, those guys in these unions, they were supposed to, they were supposed to be defending their people against this from the very beginning. I'm glad to see it happening, but they're way, way behind the clock in, in doing their damn jobs. Michael, New York 7. All right, here we go. Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals extends a previous order that for now keeps in place the Texas law known as Senate Bill 8. It marks the third time since October that the conservative-leaning appeals court has sided with Texas and let the restrictions stand. Is that, that's the abortion one, right? Here's the thing, and, and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and this needs to happen. We need to see a state openly publicly and on the record defying the order of a United States federal court. That needs to happen for us to move forward as a people. The federal courts must be kicked back into their lane aggressively with authority. It needs to happen. So I'll, be, I'll tell you something. The Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals extends a previous order that for now keeps in place the Texas law known as Senate Bill 8. As far as I'm concerned, the Texas law known as Senate Bill 8 is it's in effect. If the Supreme Court says they can strike it down, what we need to do is say, no, you don't have the authority to do that. It, it really is that the federal courts need to be put back in, in their proper place. But Michael, New York, thank you very much for the update. Very much appreciated. All right. More on Mama. Biden says he didn't mandate anything and businesses are doing it themselves, which means he just blamed the businesses. So they are the ones to be sued by all employees. And the lawyers can say Biden even said it was the businesses to blame for mandates. This is so freaking hilarious. Let me tell you something. Businesses uh, that 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 went ahead with the mandates. You absolutely deserve to go out of business. We we really need to start. We need to start burning some of the dead wood. We need to clean out our system. We need a, a, a nice, big, national 105 fever so that some of the sludge that has built up in our management class can be properly flushed out of our national system. Does that make sense, guys? It, it needs to happen. And it's get, we're going to be better off for it. The people running things right now are a combination of maniacs, degenerates, and retards. And in most cases, it's a little smattering of all three. So let's have a whole bunch of people go out of business. Lots and lots of them. Let's see the workers sue them out of existence and we'll reorganize management of those means of production in more productive ways. I kind of sound like a commie right now, guys, but I promise you I'm not one. I, you need that on a shirt, Patrick. Oh, guys, don't forget, usadevolution.com. Oh, guys, uh, what else? What else am I? I'm forgetting to shill. I'm going to start uh, schlepping uh, Cooper and French again. Richard emailed me. He said, come on, dude. So that's 
kind of how it works. I love Cooper and French product, products, by the way, in a big, big way. All right. My son, okay, so D Deb Richardson. My son's company requiring Vax by December 8th or be fired. He's looking for another job filing. Uh, as far as filing is concerned, Deb Richardson, you mean filing a lawsuit, right? How big is your son's company? Hey, I resemble that comment, Patrick. Ha ha. All right. Let's see what else we got. Sure, it makes sense. Lots of sense. But I don't see the unity and fight here, pound for pound, that we see in Australia and many European countries. Um, um, fun fact, I think that we have a lot more fight pound for pound than Australia could ever dream to have. We just have a different way of fighting. Australia just has these going out in the streets stuff. I mean, Australia is getting tyranny that we haven't even dreamed of yet. So I just don't think it's, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's comparable yet. All right. First dose by 1125. This is so freaking sick. Yeah. Richard also needed to point out we're armed. You know, we, we can keep our powder a little drier because they're a little more scared of us. Uh, religious exemption. It's Bayer, big company. Oh, wow. Could you imagine bringing down Bayer so they had to dissolve themselves and sell off their assets? Okay. What about Cooper and French? Cooper and French, Santa's workshop smells delicious for men. Oh, okay. Guess what? Richard's sending it to me. So I'm going to get some Cooper and French Santa's workshop. Is it the soap? Because guys, I'm almost out of Cooper and French soap. And whenever I use like Dove, it smells like chemical. It smells like I fell into a, a perfumed chemical waste plant. All right. Next. What else we got? All right, guys. I think we're good for tonight. Let's let's finish up with Sidney Powell's How to Buy an Election. Ready? Dear Patriots, as time passes, we are seeing more confirmation of the massive and multiple ways of cheating in the November 2020 election. For months now, anyone who raised this issue has had the left heap derision and scorn upon them. However, we are seeing that the truth does eventually make its way to the top. Take some time to read these linked articles for all the background on the shocking and successful method used by Facebook mogul Mark Zuckerberg to elect Biden. One, Mark Zuckerberg bought the 2020 election. Who knew it was for sale? Private business has no role in elections. This goes way beyond donating money to candidates or PACs. This is a systematic scheme to take over all aspects of state elections with almost half a billion dollars. Fun fact, Facebook is not a private business. Facebook is an intelligence operation run by the various governments of the world. Two. For decades, events and ideas that happened in California eventually made their way east across the country. These days, California has shown us vividly what those ideas look like when enacted. It is not pretty. We can only pray that the new idea factory is the state of Florida, as led by Governor Ron DeSantis. He's taking the lead by banning Zuckerberg from pouring millions of dollars into his state to influence elections. Three, Molly Hemingway has been working on a book about election fraud. We agree with Molly that the nation needs answers for the multitude ways the Democrats, Republicans, and others cheated, not just in 2020, but for many elections before. As always, we ask that you read and inform yourselves, inform yourselves and then share this information with those in your sphere of influence. As the poll above suggests, this is having an impact. The fake news is not reporting on any of this. The only way it is reaching people is alternative news and people like you sharing it. From Rasmussen reports, how likely is it that cheating affected the outcome of the 2020 election? October 2021, majority say likely, 56%. But guys, it gets so much better than that. I want to play you a video. Give me a second. See if it'll keep me logged in to patrickburn.locals.com. Nope, doesn't keep me logged in. Whatever. Let's log in. I should just automatically have locals logged into before I start my stream. It's never actually going to happen, guys. I don't plan things that way. All right. Behold, a favor for federal employees. 
That's not it. That's not it either. Almost there. Do, do, do. There we go. Video.america project. Found it, guys. See, that wasn't so short. Two, two minutes, 58 seconds. So worth it. Give me a second. Let me pull it up for you. Share. Share screen. Chrome tab. Monthly survey results. Share tab audio. You all are going to love this. Hello, America Project fans. Patrick Hearn here with some exciting uh, our news, our monthly polling results on how many Americans believe Joe Biden actually won the election. Let's go to, let's start with uh, the March numbers. This, these were March, what you're seeing, uh, March 30th, and we only polled 1,000 people for our first poll. And what that comes to, just to focus on the middle number, 51.2%. Uh, of all respondents agreed that election integrity issues either significantly or very significantly affected Biden's victory. So it was 51.2% believe that election, okay, where is it now? It's up to 61.4%. It's up, it's gone up, it's now 61.4% of Americans. And this is a poll conducted October 4th, 5th. To, with 1,900, almost 2,000 people. So it's very credible. And it's it has moved 10% in the last six or seven months against Mr. Biden. Uh, ten, So we're up to 61.4% of President Biden, I should say. 61.4% of respondents believe that election integrity significantly or very significantly gave President Biden his victory. Uh, Incidentally, there's another 10% who are unsure, 9.9% who are unsure. And if you do that math, that means 71.3% of Americans are either unsure or disbelieve Joe Biden legitimately won, which means at this point, we're down from, from 31% to now 28.7% of Americans actually believe he legitimately won, that, without significant, that it's not because of significant fraud. So that's and that's moved 10% against him in the last six or seven months, as well it should. Uh, next, what do what is that? How does that leave Americans feeling about election 2020, uh, 2022, which is just 10, uh, 12 months and a wake up off, right? Well, it's uh, only thir only 38.9% of Americans actually believe this upcoming election will be fair. That election integrity is not a problem. The other 61.1% are not willing to say that. And most of them, you know, uh, most of them think, you know, or clearly think it is a big problem. Okay, well, that's that's breaking news. We do that once a month. Uh, and we'll, we'll, it's down three or 4% in one month against President Biden. And let's see how it's looking uh, next month. Until then, Patrick Burns signing off for the America Project on polling results. For me, that counts as hopium. So what do you say? Guys, don't forget, one more time. Got to go to jamesmgverizon.net. Shoot him an email. Get one of these, $15 a piece. He's also got a few of these guys left. $15 a piece, jamesmg at verizon.net. Next, I think it might be time to raid Patel Patriot. He's live, so let's go ahead and raid Patel Patriot. So bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and raid channel and Patel Patriot. Start raid. And now, my darling friends, I love you all. Let us pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you Saturday. Tomorrow's my day off. I'll see you Saturday, guys. Have a great one. I will be the greatest president that God ever created. And to the rest of you, also, bye-bye.